that large we can to support the people of Ethiopia who are with us make today. this and I am agreement sure and settlement that they shall fulfill that duty. And for all of us to bind together to thank to all see who how we can mobilize and this helped us as facilitators especially uh, achieve this objective to today international and and for all of us to do that which we can to succeed to support the people of Ethiopia to make this agreement and, and what is quite clear reality. is that and for all of us to pull together they don't need to, to see what how to we do. can mobilize on this especially to our international and development partners for the process to succeed they do need assistance and what is quite clear is that they don't need to be told what to do but need to be helped to do that which they as the owners of Ethiopia wants to do and that is my request to all of you that whoever in whichever capacity join hands and support them in what they need to do it would be truly appreciated and let me conclude by saying that what has materialized for me over the last few weeks is that truly we as the people of Africa have our own solutions. All we need to do is to engage, to respect and to honor one another, to love our motherland to love our continent and to realize that in whatever capacities we hold our responsibility is to make this continent better for our children than we found it. There are no differences that are too large to be overcome and I, we have seen that in the discussions that we have seen take place between these two gentlemen. And at the end of the day, as it said, you have the freedom to choose your friends. But God has given you your neighbor that you can't choose. You just must learn to live together. And learning to live together is learning to respect one another, is learning to talk to one another, is learning to understand the beauty that we have is our diversity and for us to learn how we can live with each other within our diversity. Our diversity is our beauty. It should not be a source of division. It should be a source of pride as we share and enjoy diversity instead of our diversity becoming that which breaks us apart. We should celebrate it, we should enjoy it, and we should build our continent together. So once again, on my own behalf, and indeed on behalf of all of us being involved in the facilitation team, I congratulate you, Marshal Jula, I congratulate you, General Tadese, and your teams, for the spirit and commitment you have shown over the last few days. And our hope and prayer and our commitment also is that we shall walk with you the remainder of the way until we see a lasting peace and the true prosperity that the people of Ethiopia deserve. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, and thank you, uh, President Obasanjo, who you have authorized us to call general for the purposes of this occasion. I think your words of wisdom and your continued service to the continent is highly recognized and we really commend you for your commitment. Excellencies, at this point, I have the pleasure of inviting Field Marshal Berhard Juna, the chief of uh, the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, to deliver his statement. Marshal Jula, please. 
<coughs> uh, Your Excellency, former President Oli Saogan Obasanjo, African Union Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa. Your Excellency, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, former pre President of the Republic of Kenya. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, based on the agreement reached in Pretoria, South Africa, for lasting peace through permanent cessation of hostility, we military commanders of both sides have been engaged in the detailed discussion on the full implementation of the agreement, emphasizing on the military aspect. We have been engaged in a good spirit and understanding. Accordingly, we want to express our full commitment for bringing peace and stability to our people and country. Therefore, we will fully dedicate ourselves to implement the Pretoria Agreement and this declaration. To this end, we, will, we, <coughs> we would like to affirm our full commitment to the people of Ethiopia, to this panel and world. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcel Jula. At this point, it gives me pleasure to invite General Tadese Worede, the commander of the Tigray Armed Combatants. General Tadese, please. Thank you. His Excellency Chief NSM Obasanjo, AO High Level Panel Chair. His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, former President of Kenya and member of the panel. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I would like to, uh, to thank all of you for your efforts to bring lasting peace to the people of Tigray and people of Ethiopia in general. We fought for the last two years to protect our people and defend our interests. We have suffered untold misery over the last two years and still continue to suffer. The commitment we are making today is with the hope that expectations that our people's suffering will come to an end and soon. This is a very daunting task in the light of the many spoilers from within or outside who are profiting from, their, from this war. It's our expectation that the other party honors its agreement not only to end the conflict but also to facilitate humanitarian access and resumption of service. I thank you. Thank you uh, very much, General Tadese. Um, Excellencies, with your permission, I request we give another round of applause to Marshal Jula and General Tadese for the commitments that they've demonstrated. Thank you. Thank you very much. This brings us now to the signing ceremony. So I will call uh, two officers from the department, well, one from uh, IGAD, to step forward with two identical copies of the declaration for the signing by Marshal Jula, General Tadese, and it will be witnessed by former President Obasanjo and former President Uhuru Kenyatta.
Excellencies, with your permission and with the signing of the declaration, may I now invite uh, Field Marshal Jula to the front and General Tadese that they can exchange the declaration that they've signed in front of the leaders. Thank you very much. Excellencies, with your permission, I will now proceed with your permission, I will proceed to read the press release of the senior commanders meeting between the government of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the Tigray People's Liberation Front agree to facilitate on hinder humanitarian access. Nairobi, Kenya, November 2022. The African Union Commission concludes the meeting of senior commanders following the signing of permanent cessation of hostilities agreement between the government of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the Tigray People's Liberation Front on the 2nd November 2022. The parties have agreed to facilitate on humanitarian access to all in need of assistance in Tigray and neighboring regions, facilitate unhindered movement of humanitarian aid workers, provide security guarantees for humanitarian aid workers and organizations, as well as protection of civilians consistent with the provisions of the agreement. Furthermore, the parties agreed to the establishment of a joint committee to elaborate on the modalities for the implementation of the comprehensive disarmament, demobilization, and integration program. The African Union Commission applauds the parties on these significant confidence building measures and encourages them to continue towards the full implementation of the cessation of hostilities agreement as part of overall efforts to end the conflict and restore peace, security, and stability in Ethiopia. The four-day senior commander's meeting was facilitated by the AU High Representative for the Horn of Africa and for the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Olusegon Obasanjo, together with AU High-level panel members, former President of Kenya, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, and Her Excellency Adam Pumzile Mlambo, former Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa and member of the African Union Panel of the Y. The African Union Commission expresses appreciation to the government and people of the Republic of Kenya for hosting this senior commander's meeting, a demonstration of the continent's commitment to the African Union's agenda of silencing guns in Africa. The African Union Commission further wishes to acknowledge the support of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, 
the United Nations, the United States of America, and the African Development Bank. And thank you. Excellencies, without further ado, this brings us to the end of the signing ceremony for this very important uh, declaration. The two uh, members, President Obasanjo and President Uhuru Kenyatta, will take questions from the media, and I think we'll limit those questions to no more than three. Uh, for the purposes of this occasion. And the questions will be directed to the two panel members, President Obasanjo, President Kenyatta. Yes, I see my sister, and if you can identify yourself, and if you wish to direct the question to any of the panel members, you may wish to do so. Thank you. Thank you, and President Obasanjo, President Kenyatta. Uh, thank you very much, my dear sister. And uh, what I will do is um, really have a bit of division of labor. Uh, I will take your first question and leave my brother, uh, President Uhuru, to uh, deal with uh, the, the second question. And. Um, I will say to your question about when humanitarian uh, access will begin. In fact, it should have, be, it should have begun uh, <laughs> yesterday. Um, and as you will have heard from the statement read to you, and indeed from the uh, signed uh, declaration by the two uh, senior field commanders, uh, um, there will be from uh, with immediate effect unhindered uh, humanitarian access. Um, as we sit down here and meet here and talk here, there are people in uh, affected areas of Ethiopia, particularly in Tigray, in Afa, in Amhara, that are dying of lack of humanitarian access. Uh, medicine, uh, there are even those who have been uh, injured in the war front who needed attention and medicine and uh, medical attention who are denied because of lack of uh, humanitarian access. And, and these, cannot continue. So with immediate effect, the uh, humanitarian access uh, will resume. Um, over a period of about uh, five months, we did very well uh, before the uh, outbreak of uh, uh, the latest uh, uh, violence. And um, we believe we can do as well as we have done in the past. And we have assurance that uh, the uh, humanitarian supplies are there. Uh, there are uh, those that can go by uh, immediately by air, but the bulk of it, and uh, that is the way to go, the bulk of it will go by uh, road. And uh, we have also streamlined um, what should be done in terms of checking. There will be check at the bottle, at the point of, uh, uh, that would, because you're always pulling my legs, uh, I, thought you are pulling, I thought you are pulling it again. Um, there will be check at the port of embarkation and then uh, at the uh, uh, point of uh, discharging of materials. Um, there will be uh, security as may be required 
by the uh, humanitarian uh, agencies and workers. And of course, uh, the declaration that uh, my two brothers have signed and have exchanged uh, contain all these uh, provisions so that uh, humanitarian uh, access can begin with immediate effect. Thank you, President. I, I think the only part two who had to do with uh, the issue of uh, accountability. And I think I just want to go back to what President Obasanjo said. Our first and key priority was number one, to silence the guns. Number two, to ensure immediate humanitarian access to the people of Tigray, to the people in the surrounding regions, but to all the people of Ethiopia to end the suffering that has been occasioned as a result of this war. But Madam, if you will uh, recall and you have taken a look at our document uh, that we signed, the agreement that we signed in South Africa, we did in that main agreement go through the issue of transitional justice. But that is a process that can only follow once the guns have fallen silent and once we have uh, dealt with a humanitarian uh, crisis. Furthermore, even in this document, we have made a reference once again to the security of the civilian population, mainly women and children. And in this document also, it has been explicitly made out and laid out that there shall be severe sanction on anyone who will commit atrocities against civilians. So we are cognizant of that fact, but we must begin where we must begin. And the first point of call is silencing the guns and ensuring immediate access to humanitarian uh, 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 requirements for the people of Ethiopia. The rest shall follow through as part of the political process, as part of uh, the healing process that must take place within Ethiopia. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, the gentleman at the back there. We take the, there is a third question and then we conclude this segment. I see none, so Excellencies, and we. We are not here to talk about any particular country this way or that way. We are here to talk about the peace of Ethiopia and all the issues that concern the peace and security of Ethiopia have been addressed by the parties and uh, I think that's all I need to say about that. This is not about talking about this person or that person or this person. This is a question of silencing the guns and all the issues appertaining to silencing the guns, access to humanitarian needs, rebuilding Ethiopia have all been taken into account as well as safeguarding the sovereignty and integrity of the nation state of Ethiopia. So I think that's what I can say about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And I think with your permission, uh, may I request you, Mr. President, and others to really give a round of appreciation to the people of Ethiopia for the major step that they've taken this afternoon. <laughs> Congratulations. And I would also like you to join me to thank our two elders, uh, General Obasanjo and former President Uhuru Kenyatta for the stellar work that they've done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I don't want you to get away with wrong impression. Both President Uhuru Kenyatta and the director refer to me as general. Now, when I'm doing this type of job, I'm not general. It's only my political opponents that refer to me as general. And I know where President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, I will know on which side he is. No, but he's my chief, you know, you know, so I have no, I, I don't have a big problem with that one. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, thank you. And we'll also like to thank our partners, the government of the United States, we would like to thank EGAD, the African Development Bank and others. Thank you. Thank you very much.